Hey everybody, it's Randy Pearson, Vice President of Life and Annuities at Gordon Marketing, and today I've got our RVP, Ray Parman, with me, and we're gonna be talking about the gift that can't be outgrown. Stay tuned. All right, Ray, in the life insurance arena, um, we're gonna talk about this subject uh, matter of the gift that can't be outgrown. What, what product are we talking about here? Yeah, we're, we're actually talking about cash value life insurance, permanent life insurance that can be in the form of whole life or index UL, anything with a major cash value forward uh, part to it. All right, very good. So permanent life insurance, uh, purchased by whom in this scenario? Most often purchased by the parents or the grandparents as, as well. Those are usually okay. the two uh, <laughs> folks that, that could buy it. Okay, but on the life of who? They're going to purchase that on their children or their grandchildren. All right, yeah. very good. So we're talking about kids insurance here, right? I mean, is there any money in kids insurance? I mean, why would anybody, why would an advisor even want to talk to somebody about kids insurance? Yeah, absolutely. You know, a, a lot of cases where generous parents looking to set their kid up for the, the next generation and, and even create intergenerational wealth transfer, there can be a, a lot of opportunity within this and higher commissions by virtue of overfunding a IUL or perhaps a whole life contract as well. Yeah, I kind of teed you up for that question because I literally had an agent just within the last week or two reach out to me and we were discussing a case in which the child of their insured prospect, their prospect, um, had been diagnosed as a uh, as an infant, about one or two years old, with type A diabetes, right, juvenile mm -hmm. diabetes. But before that, they had had the foresight to buy a, a very nice, approximately hundred thousand dollar death benefit life insurance policy. Oh, well, trust me, after that diabetes diagnosis, obtaining that kind of life insurance would have been significantly mm -hmm. more difficult. Significantly yes. more difficult. So let's talk about that insurability issue. What hurdles are faced in, in this type of sales opportunity when you're talking about kids and life insurance? Yeah, absolutely. And, and that that's the attractiveness of this kind of strategy is securing that insurability for a child because that case in point, and I've experienced other cases as well, where the child grows, enters into early adulthood, and some event might happen, an accident, an illness, could uh, take away their insurability. So putting life insurance on a young child is is a, a prudent way to establish that insurability. And the cost of insurance is uh, mm -hmm. not very high either. <laughs> yeah, substantially less with the younger you buy it. Yeah. Now, what about financial concerns, right? I mean, if I'm gonna place a very large amount of life insurance on a child, I'm sure the insurance company may have some concerns or there may be some issues that we have to address. Correct, yeah. We can't just put a, a bunch of life insurance on a child without the, the parents having any sort of life insurance on themselves. So generally speaking, most carriers, if, if we're gonna do a strategy like this, wanna see uh, like um, amounts of insurance on the parents, if not more mm -hmm. than on the, the child themselves. And then to take that step even further, um, we also take into consideration, you know, their net worth, what things are going to look like if the child's going to have a tax issue down the road if they yeah. go to inherit uh, their parents' uh, asset. You know, there's definitely two parts of that. That's like insurance on the parents, if not more, and also telling the story, convincing the underwriters of this taxable uh, problem that, that the child yeah. may one day incur. And potentially even a third, right? Uh, if there are siblings involved, right? Yes. I mean, making sure that there's parity with regards to insurance among those siblings can be an issue. And let's talk a little bit about teeing up the sale. So if an agent out there is thinking, yeah, you know, maybe I need to experiment, dive into this market a bit more, how might they go about teeing up the sale? Yeah, great question there. Um, you know, it, it's really about telling the story. I think most people, they, you know, a story resonates really well with them and, and actually putting some tangible items in front of them as well. And what I like to do is construct a, uh, an illustration that shows premium being funded for a limited amount of time, 10, 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. and then showing where shortly after that funding period of the policy ends, that there's a, a significant withdrawal. And in this case, I'm kind of thinking perhaps a uh, kid who just got out of college and you know we show mm -hmm. a notable amount coming out of the policy that they could use to 
pay off student loans yeah. or they could use it to pay for a wedding or uh, put a down payment on a house, anything Absolutely. like that. Um, so and then continuing that story on, you know, this is something, you know, where we have the death benefit, we have the cash value, we're able to finance these major life events that come up with this cash value that's mm -hmm. in the policy. But then years down the road, when they go to retire, we show a significant retirement income stream that they can rely on to supplement their retirement mm -hmm. needs as well. So, yeah. you know, I think that uh, one of the other things that is should be obvious to most folks watching this video is that when you sell life insurance to young people, children, you're building your future client base, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Certainly a huge opportunity to sell those kids policies when they graduate from college, when they get that first nice paying job, when they get married, when they have their first child. So if you want to build your inventory of future sales, you might want to start with the young ones. Yeah, right? absolutely. So listen, uh, if you're an agent out there and, and you'd like to sell more uh, insurance in that uh, younger age market, don't hesitate to reach out to Ray. He's got some great advice and a wealth of experience to assist you in, in helping getting into that space. Uh, but with that, we have to call this episode of Selling Life and Annuities to an end, regrettably. I want to thank Ray for participating yeah. with me today. I want to thank you for watching. Make sure you tune in every Tuesday for a brand new episode of Selling Life and Annuities. Click subscribe below this video and we'll send you a notification. Thanks and have a great day.